So today I am not in my beloved storyline. I'm actually playing around with Icepring and Icepring kindly reached out to me and asked if I wanted to have a go at using their authoring suite. So of course I said yes, I love the chance to play around with new software um, and to um, build different things and explore new ways of creating digital learning. And I actually have had so much fun with this program. Um, so in this video, I'm going to take you through the little project that I've been doing and explore some of the features, functionality of iSpring and talk a little bit about who I think this software would be best suited to. So before we get into explore some of the functionality of iSpring, I just wanted to show you their kind of quick start menu. And this is what will appear when you um, first download the iSpring suite and you've got all of your kind of learning aids here or the tools that you implement into your courses and we've got the online tools as well which we'll cover very briefly um, after this so with these kind of little mini sort of authoring tools i suppose um these are really good for being able to create assets separately from a course and use them again and again so for example with the screencast um you might record yourself using a certain software, um, doing a walkthrough, something like that. But that might be applicable to maybe like four different courses. Um, so you can create that as a standalone object or thing, I suppose, and then just embed it into whichever course you're working on. So here we are in my iSpring course. And you're probably thinking, Emma, that is PowerPoint. And you're not wrong. And this really threw me the first time that I accessed this program because um, I kept clicking create course and it kept jumping me to PowerPoint. And I was like, what is it doing? I don't understand. And it's only when I sort of actually used my eyes and looked and saw that it said iSpring Suite and it's a tab at the top um, that I realized it's a PowerPoint integration. So I'll walk you through the functionality, which I think just really sell this program and really um, make it a good example of listening to what your customers want. So the first is with their content library. Their content library is fantastic. It's so good. Um, the backgrounds just blew me away um, and actually kind of made me a little bit mad that I've been spending so long trying to find consistent backgrounds using like stock sites that don't have like people in and whatever. Um, so they have a huge, huge background library and you can choose your style and essentially it's like groups or suites of these background images that you can use for like scenarios or um, just as backgrounds for your e-learnings and this is an absolute game changer for me because quite often i find being a uk based person if i try and find kind of scenery like this using stock uh, sites it's quite americanized particularly when i've gone and done healthcare e-learnings the hospitals are always very American. Um, and when I'm working for an English client, that just doesn't work. So having kind of these options of being able to um, have these blank backgrounds is just amazing. Um, and just, we'll just speed up the process of creating courses by loads because you've got a range of like consistent imagery that could be used um, across one activity or one e-learning. And the same goes for things like their characters and their objects. So their object library is like a range of um, PNG images, very similar to the backgrounds. You've got things like office stuff, like pens and clipboards and things, but you've also got even got things like wheelchairs and they've already had the background remove and you just insert them. And it's just so quick and so easy. So their character library, again, is massive. You've got a really good range of um, illustration styles or photography, ages, races, religions, all of that. Some of them you can even customize so you can see you can change the shirt color for this person. But another like real key selling point for me on this is that you can actually create your own character. So you click custom characters and create. And um, this is just for the illustrated style. So obviously you can't do this with photography, but you can literally completely customize your character so you can choose like their skin color even down to like an exact shade you can choose their hair and if they're wearing any headgear or any scarves or anything like that 
Um, you can choose their clothes, again, the colors of their clothes and then accessories as well, like glasses. And this, again, I think is such a game changer with creating e-learning and creating courses. Um, because again, with any kind of stock illustrations or stock photography, sometimes just finding a diverse range of people can be really hard. And yet you can save your character as well. So you can just reuse them and reuse them again after that. So the next thing I want to highlight is the player. And I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to be able to customize it to the level that you can. Um, so you can change the colors in your theme. And there is a few preset ones, um, which I love that gradient one. That's really cool. Um, but you can also literally customize it to everything. You can change the color of the buttons, the hover states, the icons, the background. Um, you can change like the pop up. So when you get the sidebar come up, what color that is, and you can save your custom theme and use it again and again. So that's the first really cool thing about this. Uh, the second is the preset layouts. And I think this is really key with this software because it opens it up to being incredibly versatile. So it gives you a few suggestions. So you get like online course, full player where you've got like everything turned on. We've got it with the sidebar where you can see the individual slides and there's the notes function too. We've got things like with a presenter video. So if you do like a talking head style, um, you can have that play at the same time as your slides. We've got like present different presentations and you can create one completely custom to your needs. So that's what I've done here. I've turned on what I need to and turned off what I don't want. And it is just as simple as a check of a button. But what I think is really key to highlight here with this is that it really, for me, um, it's one of the first softwares that I've played with where I feel like it could be really multi-use. So, for example, with the um, full player, you'll notice we've got an option for drawing. And this means that the learner can actually annotate on screen. Now, this is where you could potentially merge the worlds of kind of asynchronous and synchronous learning together. So you could export this learning um, and have people open it live whilst you're presenting it. And then when you get to that specific activity, you could have the learner annotate on screen and, for example, build a mind map or do whatever, brainstorm as you're talking. Um, you could actually physically get them involved in the activities with the with the integrating the quizzes. They could do the quiz live while you're also presenting it. Um, so it opens up a real kind of wealth of possibilities for interaction, particularly when you go into like the virtual classroom and webinar space as well. But also for people that potentially couldn't attend um, a virtual classroom or webinar, for example, because you've got the option to add in notes. Um, who's to say that you couldn't kind of give the learner the slides and the notes as well, so that they're then able to access that at a later date. Um, and for people that aren't necessarily good with video, some people don't like video learning, don't engage well with it. This is, gives them the option to actually paste it to their needs too. Um, because you can also link things like any resources used and you can add annotation, um, narration, sorry, you can add text to speech. So you could give somebody kind of that recorded virtual classroom to be able to access in their own time at, at their own pace. So I think it's really cool that you can kind of stretch this beyond the use of e-learning. Obviously, I default to seeing it through an e-learning lens because that's what I do most of. But I think particularly with the virtual classroom space, there's so much potential with this um, to take your virtual classrooms up a massive notch. And I would say that um, whilst you can create great e-learnings with it, I feel that it is really geared towards that and being able to kind of merge that asynchronous and synchronous learning and really elevate that interactivity. So before I quickly jump into the online um, tools with iSpring, let's have a quick play around with some of the interactions that um, it can offer to embed within your courses and your presentations. So it's really easy to embed um, a quiz or an interaction or a screen record. You can see in the toolbar, we've got all of our tools here and all you do is select one on a new slide so let's go for interaction. And then it'll open up a separate window and then you just click new interaction. 
And there's a really good range of different interactions. I really love this guided image one where the arrow moves around based on what it's highlighting. That could be a real game changer for things like diagrams and stuff. Um, but we've got things like tabs, timeline, process, all of that kind of stuff. So choose the one that you want and click create interaction. And then you can change things like the colors, the fonts. Um, for this specific one, obviously you can add like events in and all you do is edit the text to suit whatever it is you're, um, you're writing about. And then when you're ready to kind of implement it into your course, you click save and return to course. And then it will implement it or put it onto that slide. So to preview it, you literally click the preview button and you can see how it's going to look in the player. If you ever need to kind of re-edit it, all you do is choose the slide that has got your either interaction or quiz or whatever on. And then you just select the button again from your toolbar and you can go back in and change it and change the colors or whatever. Um, so it's as simple as that. It's really easy to do. I think you can create some really good e-learnings with this. More functionality doesn't necessarily mean better learning. Um, obviously, we've got programs like Storyline, which are packed to the brim with functionality. But if you don't know what you're doing with it or it doesn't have a purpose, then the learning's not going to be any better. So although this is a slightly simpler program, I think you can still create really um, impactful learning with it. So let's just very, very quickly go over iSpring's cloud-based functionality. And this is essentially kind of like a um, file sharing platform along with their online authoring tool as well. So you can create things called projects and you can see I've just created a sort of test one here. And within this, you can upload like a range of files like MP4, PDF, PowerPoint, zip files, etc. And you can collate kind of your learning materials in one place. So it acts a little bit like a SharePoint um, because you can invite collaborators as well. So people that have got uh, iSpring accounts as well, you can invite them to collaborate on the project with you. So. For example, say you are in the storyboard phase of developing an e-learning, you could invite your stakeholders or your SMEs um, to view the storyboard. They could then leave comments and edit things and everything. So it really supports this kind of like collaborative approach to creating learning content, um, which I really like. And it also means that because it's cloud based, if you've got people off sick, for example, everybody can still access the files. Um, so it doesn't sort of slow things down either. And as part of this, you can also um, create what they call pages. And this is essentially their online course authoring tool. It's very similar to sort of like Articulate Rise and Evolve and things where you select a little plus icon and it provides you with a list of pre-done um, interactivity elements. So things like images, videos, options for text. So you can have like lists and things. And then you just select those and input it with your content or your photos or whatever you're doing. So this is really, really easy to use. Um, I think for people that are very new to digital learning, this could be a good place to start um, because you've got that kind of functionality pre-programmed -pro pre for you. So all you have to do is put your content in. You can also change um, the settings as well. So define how you want the learner to navigate through it, whether it's locked or not. You can change the design as well and the fonts and everything too. And what I didn't mention with the desktop apps is that you can export both the online courses and the desktop ones for your LMS. So you can export with SCORM and API too. And um, with these, with these online courses, you can copy them to another account. So if you've got somebody else in your organization that has an iSpring account, you could copy a course across or to iSpring Learn. And iSpring Learn is their LMS. Um, so if you have access to that as well, then you can actually create these courses and the same with the desktop ones and import them into the LMS too. So that's a great kind of like add on to have as well. So these are also um, sort of good for micro learnings. And because you've got that functionality, that cloud functionality of being able to um, house like multiple files, you could almost create um, or build out kind of like a learning suite, I suppose. So for example, you might have one of these pages um, with a couple of chapters and that might be the knowledge based part of your e-learning. 
Um, and then afterwards, you might have the learner do a worksheet and go do something practical within their workplace and then follow it up with a video. So you could house all of those learning tools or those um, kind of activities, I suppose, in one place and start to build out a curriculum or a pathway as well. So to very quickly summarise, um, I've had really good fun using iSpring for this, actually, and I'm going to continue to use it to build out this short e-learning here. So keep an eye out for any updates on that in the coming kind of weeks and months. Um, but to summarise, I think iSpring is great for people that are perhaps quite new to digital learning or for people that offer a more blended learning approach. So if you're somebody that creates e-learnings, but also delivers webinars or does virtual classrooms, etc., this could be a great software to have. So I think it's a real kind of multi-use software um, and it could be almost like an all-in-one. So you don't have to have like multiple subscriptions. It's um, it's got so much potential um, to be able to create a variety of things. And particularly if you're really familiar with PowerPoint and you've been using PowerPoint for a while, it's a way to just really elevate those two. Um, so yeah, a really good software. I love the cloud-based functionality and that kind of collaborative approach to creating learning and not having to send files back and forth. Um, and thank you, iSpring, for giving me the chance to have a play around with it. Um, I've had lots of fun and um, yeah, I'll be posting updates on this project in the coming weeks as well.